What's up guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Jayquip and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do the Echo Effect inside of DaVinci Resolve Fusion. The Echo Effect unlocks unlimited possibilities and allows you to create some really cool looking animations. So what does the Echo Effect do? The Echo Effect duplicates any image that you put into it and creates a trail going behind it. You can make this as long as you want. You can also remove different frames in between and you can also generate frames in between of your frames. We're going to be using a plugin from Reactor, but don't worry, it is completely free. If you guys want today's project files, you can get that at my Buy Me A Coffee page. Apart from getting all the project files from all of my tutorials, you also get early access to every one of my videos, and you get discounts on my store. If you guys want that, check out the link down in the description below. But with all that being said, let's get into the video. Alright, so now that we're inside of DaVinci Resolve, as you can see, I have my Fusion clip that just has my echo effect playing in the background here. And first up, what we need to do is make a brand new Fusion clip, so or composition. So I'll just drag it down, put it on my second video layer, and extend it so it is the full length of my uh, composition here. And now I'll head over to the Fusion page. So first up, I need to install Reactor. So you can install Reactor at the link down below. You just have to download it and drag it right into DaVinci Resolve. And then once you have it installed, we just need to run it. So we come up to Workspace, come down to Scripts, Reactor, and then Open Reactor. Then it'll go through and update the Reactor and then open up this awesome UI window. And now these are all the plugins that we can install. So let's go ahead and search for the Echo plugin. And now all you need to do is check that box and you can go right ahead and install it. But once you've installed it, you just need to restart DaVinci Resolve and then you can go ahead and start using it. So first for this composition, I'm going to grab a background node and connect it up here. And then I'm just going to set a four corner gradient and go ahead and just add in uh, some of the colors that I might want to use here. Kind of like that sort of pastel color look right now. All right, so let's go ahead and add in a text node because that is what I'm going to be applying the echo effect to. I'm just going to come over to text and type echo effect. I'm going to change the font to Franklin Gothic heavy, and then I can just leave the size as it is. Next, I'll go to the first frame and I can move it to any position on the screen and just add some keyframes jumping throughout. I'm just adding some more that it can uh, move around to. Let's just have it make like a little bit of a square. There we go. So now it'll just slowly move in between those points. And something to just make it look a little bit better. If I click on these points, we can come and adjust the path here. So I'll just make this straight. Then I can grab the other handle and just kind of smooth it out a little bit. And I'll do the same thing on these other ones. Uh, if, if it's locked like that, just hold on control. And then you can adjust them individually like so. There we go, I think that looks really pretty good. So now that we have that done, I'm going to copy the text node and the new Control Shift V to add in an instance. So inside of this instance, everything is linked between the first text node, okay? So if I change anything in here, it will update the original text node. But if we come over to the shading tab, come down to the uh, appearance here, what we can do is right click and then do D instance. And then what I'll do is since it's D instance, I can view it off to the side, I can now change it to be a text outline effect, okay? And I can come through and de-instance a bunch of the other controls here so I can change it up and have it different, but that's all that I want to do for this one. Next, on the select element, I'll come down to number two, right-click on the enabled and do de-instance. Then I'll check enable, come down to the appearance, and now I can set it to text fill. We don't have to de-instance any of that because it's not being used in the first text node. I'm going to set the type to be image, and now we can come and take our background node and we'll have to put it into the first text node here. There's a new input that appeared. And if I plug that in, now in the echo effect, you can see the background is showing through. Okay, before we continue in the tutorial, make sure you guys hit the like button and subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on a new video that I put out. Now let's get back into the echo effect. We wanna come down to the mapping level and do full image. All right, and now that we've got that done, what we can do is add in the echo effect and then connect it up after the background out here. Let me bring down a merge, put it right there, just like so. That's how we want it set up. And now inside of the echo effect, we can see we already have this little trail that's going on. But what we want to do is add some more frames. So let's type 30 frames. And then we can uh, use this slider to make it skip frames. So let's set that to about five. And uh, if we skip forward, uh, we might want to bring the echo frames up to maybe like 40. And I might bring this back down to four. There we go. So now we have this little echo trail that's following our text. So going back to the first instance here, the reason I set it up how I did, uh, having the background node coming in 
as a texture on the text. It makes it so that the text is solid, so that like it cut, so you can't see the on in this example, you can't see the e behind it here. So on the text, if I had set this to just be uh, transparent, you'd be able to see all the text overlapping, and, and that wouldn't look that good. So I wanted it to be all the text is solid, so you can't see through it. But it looks like you can see through it to the background. Hopefully that makes sense, but that is how you do that. Now that we've got that done, after the text one, I'm going to add in a soft glow, bring the glow size up, and bring the gain down a little bit. I'll copy this and paste it after the echo, and this one I'll also have to bring the gain down a bunch, and just have a little slight glow added to it. So if I grab these and do Control p to disable them, as you can see, it just adds a little bit to the uh, overall look. And finally, after the last merge, I'll do shift space and add in the grain effect, bring the power down to about uh, 2.5, and now it has a slight grain over the image. Now, if you guys are going to be using the preset that comes from my Buy Me A Coffee page, you will need to install Echo, uh, that plugin, but once you've done that, you just need to drag the setting file right inside of Fusion and it will work for you. Well, that's going to be it for this effect. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on a brand new video. Again, if you want the project files, you can do so at my Buy Me A Coffee page, and that's another great way to support the channel. If you guys have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below. But with all that being said, I'll see you guys next time for another video.